When you're learning Godot, one of the first things you got to figure out is how to get your nodes to be able to talk to each other, share the information like health or points or whatever, or their names. Like in this in this little example, I've got I've got this little belt over here. How is he going to communicate with his friends? That's what we're going to look at. I'm going to give you four different ways, meh, three different ways on how to go about solving this little problem. The first way, but probably not the most robust way, is to make good use of this scene tree hierarchy. All right, so if I have some, uh, what are we, well, let's say they're students, and I want to be able to have them communicate um, with a, a parent node. So we just use the scene tree and we use it carefully. So we have our girls and we have them parented to the teacher. Then this teacher is just a, a spatial node. But I've given them scripts. I've given this a teacher script for the teacher and I've given the girls student scripts and I've given them a class name student just to make it a little easier to test what it is. Having the two girls under the teacher is going to let me be able to let them talk through the get parent and get children uh, functions like get parent or for the teacher get children. Uh, so let's look at what, what we've tried to do here. We try to implement a roll call function just to get all the names of the students that are here. So we can get all the children with a get children function, which will be girl and girl too. What will we do with that? Oh, uh, we'll see. Oh, we'll be safe. We're going to be safe. We're going to say, hey, do you have the method get name? If you do, well, just give me that name from that child dot get name function. Uh, we can also change this to just ask if this is a, is it a student? If child is student. And we can do that because we've given th these girls a student class name. Uh, so that's if, if you want to be specific for students, you can do that. Or maybe things in this in your scene besides students also have the get name function. So we can just leave it the way it was. So here for each for each one, we'll get their name and we'll put them in, in an array. And then at the end, just print it out. Right? And we'll do that on ready. So it should uh, activate as soon as we run this. Let's see what we get. Yep, we found the students, Linda and Sherry. And where did they come from? Well, it had the get name function, right? So in here, it had a get name. And what did it do? It returned its own name. And this was, this was saved in export variable. So I can duplicate these. And it's very easy for me to give them a custom name over here. This one will be, um, this one will be Bob. And we'll just move Bob behind them. So in that example, we went from the top down, from the teacher down to its children. Uh, going the other way is also possible. We can, we can implement a find a friend function. And in the ready here, this, this girl will try to find a friend, Sherry. So let's look at that, that function, what, what we did here. We got a name, friend's name, and how we could do this. We could ooh, get tree, get root, find no teacher. Ugh, yuck, it works, uh, but we don't like that. That's gross. Let's just keep it simple. Go up a level to the parent, which we know the parent of all these girls will be the teacher. So we know that, that we know that'll be the teacher. We'll declare available friend, and then we'll see if the parent has the method find student. We'll go ahead and use that. And if that friend was found, let's say I got my friend. I found my friend. So that means the this function needs to be with the teacher, right? This is the parent's function. Let's look. So here it is with the parent, the teacher, find student, we give it a name, and just for each of the children, if the child has get name, if the student's name is that name, then we'll return that child. And this will be a reference to that node. So let's hit F5 and run that and see what we get printed out. And sure enough, three students all looked for their friend Sherry, and all of them said, I found my friend Sherry. Even though, yes, one of them was Sherry herself. Which one? Which one was it? There it is. That's Sherry. Goodbye, Sherry. You're done. No, just kidding. So that's the first way. You pay attention to the scene, uh, scene tree and have them interact through their uh, position in that tree. The second way we can uh, have our nodes talk to each other is with a globals script. So we'll plop down a new script. I always call it globals, but you can call it not globals. And we're gonna make sure that everything in this script is accessible 
anywhere in any code. And the way to do that is go to Project, Project Settings, and in this Auto Load tab, uh, we can choose our global script and then add it in here. Now, if you want to access any functions or variables in there, for example, in our teacher here, uh, we, we can just write globals, which is the name of that script, dot teacher. And here, what I've done for our globals is just say, have the teacher be globally accessible. Anyone can find this teacher because it's global now. It's global now. But I need to have it set when this teacher is ready. So when this teacher is ready, he will say, hey, globals, I am the teacher, me. So then later we can use this, and I'm going to put an input event here. When I press a button, I'll have our teacher, if the teacher is ready, to call roll call, take roll. And we'll see if that works. And he took roll. Oh, but I forgot to clear the contents of that array, so they're just adding those three students each time I take roll. <laughs> but that's okay. Just a simple bug. Now, if you like trickle down economics, you're going to love the third way, uh, which I call trickle down programming. So I'm having input events, like for this little machine, I'll switch the gear. Uh, and I'm going to trickle down the order switch gear or the function switch gear. I'm going to start at the globals. And then I'm going to trickle down to the floor, which holds all the nodes, and then to this specific component, which uh, has, as you can might be able to tell, there's more than one thing here uh, that needs to know if the gear is getting switched. But let's look at an example of that with our girls. I want to be very organized and have my function trickle down uh, from the top to the bottom to share the information the way I wanted to. So I'm starting at globals. Let's look at globals. And I'm going to give them a quiz. That's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to have a, a quiz. And we're going to start at the top, cons having globals considered to be at the top, and going down to the next level, which will be the teacher. So we'll make sure the teacher has that method and get the results from him giving the quiz. And then we'll just print out the quiz results. So the next layer down, as we trickle, should be the teacher. And he should have his own give quiz function. And this we can define this function as we would imagine a teacher giving a quiz, counting how many students take it, adding up their results, and of course making sure they have the method, calling it, adding up the results, and at last returning the average of their uh, scores. So at the very bottom should be the girls, right? Let's see, their give quiz function. They have it too. They are, it's defined as, I don't know, a very stupid way to take a quiz, just get a random score. <laughs> uh, that will get returned up to the teacher, which will be averaged out and returned up, trickled back up to your globals. Uh, so I'll hit F5 and then I'll hit the button a few times to get take a quiz. And we can see their results are as you expect. All right, you're done. You did it. So if, uh, those those three ways should should be enough to help you figure out how to implement some information sharing in your own game. Uh, but hey, I will actually give you a fourth way, and this is the uh, dangerous and sexy way. If you look here, I have three computers, and they are unlike the previous example where I could use a trickle down. Um, hierarchy to send information from the top to the bottom. Uh, these these computers, you know, I, I might not know where they are in the scene tree, uh, but as you can tell, they all are getting updated at the same time uh, with, with some information. And we're doing this with a subscription plan, just like subscribing to a magazine. When a new magazine comes out, they will all get updated. Or in this instance, if the FPS changes or if the number of objects in the game changes, they'll get an update. And with that update, of course, they'll be able to change their display. Uh, and this will be a one to many or a one publisher to many subscribers relationship, uh, which can be very helpful as well. This is a little bit more complicated than the other methods, so bear with me. We, here, we have some global variables, and this is going to be in our globals um, script globally accessible and we'll have 
are variables, are global variables that you might need throughout your game. For me, I want to know FPS, how many objects are in there, maybe if the level's passed, or maybe something for playing sounds. So I'll have this in a dictionary with, their, with the name of the global variable and the value itself. And then I'm also going to have a dictionary of subscribers. And I'll store in here nodes or references to nodes and what subscription they want to subscribe to. So maybe I have the computer and it wants to subscribe to the object count. Or maybe I have, I don't know, a belt and it wants to subscribe to, um, I don't know, some sounds or something. So I have these three, and I also have a service busy because uh, changing arrays in multiple places or changing dictionaries in multiple places at the same time can cause crashes, which are bad. So we're going to be a little bit careful. Now let's see the functions for this. Bear with me. Here we go. So, of course, you might just want to increment one of them, but, but since they're in a dictionary, you'll need the name of it, the name of that global variable. What does updating it entail? Because it's going to be a little bit more complicated than just saving it with a subscription plan. Here in update, of course, we have the name and the value. Um, we we first we can just set it. We can say, hey, this 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 global variable at that name now equals this this value. And now we're going to go through our subscribers as long as our our phone line isn't busy, and send it that update. But of course, for it to get an update from the subscription, it would have had to subscribe in the first place. So when we subscribe, we say, hey, I'm, I'm the computer, I'm at this node, and I want to subscribe to this string. And we, we add it to the list of nodes that want updates about that variable. If we already have that variable in our dictionary, then we just add another subscriber. So it's an array of nodes that all want information about this subscription update, which is why we're actually getting arrays here when we update it. We get the array of people interested. For each of them, we send them that update with the variable name and value. Okay, and lastly, sometimes we might want to unsubscribe a node might be deleted and we might need to uh, tell this subscription service it's no longer interested. So what we will do is we'll find that node and erase it. Now for the computer or the nodes that are subscribed to such a service, let's look at one of those. Here's the um, here's that status bar thing. And it will, in its ready function, subscribe. It will say, hey, I want to subscribe, hey globals, which has that function, I'm subscribing, self, and I'm subscribing to this variable. So I want to get updates about this variable. Then we'll need a take update function, which is what we are calling from globals here. Every time something has been updated, we tell all the subscribers to take the update. So they'll need to have this method. We'll look at the name of the variable, and it might be object count. And if, and if it is object count, well, we know then we'll know what to do with the value. In this instance, we'll take the value, make sure it's a string, and put it in the text so that we can see it updated in the object value uh, little text node here. And one more thing, before we delete such a node in our game, we might need to make sure it's okay to delete. So if the service isn't busy, if the line isn't busy, we'll make sure to tell globals our subscription service to unsubscribe myself all right we're done good job you made it when uh when i was helping my friend learn a bit of godot uh his biggest one of his biggest problems was figuring out how to just get nodes to talk so hopefully hopefully some of these these methods help will help you a little bit um but i'm not a youtuber so don't like don't subscribe get out of here go make something awesome that's what you should do Psh, youtube <laughs>